Welcome to the Crit House, everybody. You have just seen the work of Sean Sullivan and his project 86, um, which is uh, is for me an interesting project to talk about. So Sean, welcome to the Crit House. Um, it's nice nice to have you on and see your, your project. Um, we are so honored again to have Ellen Friedlander back with us as a reviewer. She's out in Los Angeles. She woke up early. She's, uh, she's out with us. Um, she is the co-director of the Pasadena Photographic Arts and she has been exhibited internationally. Um, she has in the past been featured on Lens Scratch, The Hand Magazine and the Candid Frame Podcast and, uh, and is a great friend of the program. So Ellen, it's great to have you with us. Thank you again. And our special honored guest of the day, Jamie Windsor is coming from us from across the pond. Jamie um, has a YouTube channel that has been so informative to me um, as I've been learning to uh, become a better photographer. Um, Jamie's program um, takes a look at uh, not only like photo related tips and reviews and sort of techniques and things like that, but for me, the things that are, are the most important that I've, I have um, uh, been, that, what that has been the magnet for your program for me has been just that philosophical and the ethical discussions that you have on your program. Um, uh, so it's not only about the how to photograph, but the why to photograph. And, um, and Jamie, for all that, thank you for doing it. And thank you for coming on the Crit House. Well, thank you for having me on. So uh, Sean, Sean Sullivan, um, your project is interesting to me um, for a number of reasons, not only from a photographic standpoint, but also because you have actually had quite a bit of critique done already. Um, you've been through a couple of portfolio reviews, if I remember right, and then you have now, or, and maybe more are coming. But so, um, so you have really gone out to find out more from experts and people's other opinions about um, your project. Can you tell us more about the project and maybe what it is that you have not only learned, but what you're trying to learn as you move forward with uh, finalizing the project? First, thank you for having me. Uh, the project is called 86. I did this for my final project for the Griffin Museum of Photography's Atelier program. So I was driving around thinking about what I wanted, you know, my final project to be. And I saw a couple of these houses actually, you know, down the street from where I live. And some of these images, I actually, three of these images I took uh, five years ago when I was living in Natick. And the reason why I didn't continue on with it, I, I ran out of subject material. So when I started finding these houses in Waltham, I thought this would be a great final project for the course. Um, I decided to shoot them at night, uh, because the colors that I can get at night, I can't get necessarily during the day. And also photographing at night, it, uh, highlights the, the quietness and the lack of humanity in the buildings. Yep. So these are, these are long exposures at night and you're using, um, light painting with a, are you using a flashlight or what are you using for it to, uh. To generate yeah, I got um, yeah, I got a couple of flashlights at Home Depot. Not all of them are light painted, but the uh, the majority of them are. Okay, Jamie Windsor, tell us your give us your wisdom and your thoughts about what you're seeing from Mr. Sullivan here. Uh, I think I think it's a fascinating subject. Uh, these kind of a, abandoned spaces, um, because it's such an interesting thing where you have somewhere that's sort of designed for people but the people aren't there and the kind of the the there's so much sort of context and sort of connotation that that comes in comes in there it's sort of um you know what what's happened to them as they sort of decayed what does it say about the environment um that they exist in and um uh one thing i think as well with photography with no people in which is always an interesting thing for me is that you you're looking at an environment and when no people are present the the audience sort of become the 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 kind of person in the scene in a way mm -hmm. um so i think there's there's the chance for you to sort of engage with that environment a little bit more um on an emotional level um rather than feeling more as sort of an outsider looking looking at a scene kind of going on um, so I think it's a it's a very interesting, very interesting uh, set of images to 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 take. Um, 
I I think uh, that um, there's that I think number ten there, which we're looking at, is is particularly stands out for me. But um, uh, just I mean, at first let's talk about it as a as a body of work. I think um, yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting subject. I think there it'd be interesting to hear kind of um sort of where where you're at in terms of like how what where you feel you want to go with this i think before i can sort of provide sort of more okay more more feedback well before we get there from from sean let's hold let's hold that let's hear from ellen um and hear what her thoughts are of the body work we're looking at what do you think ellen so good morning or afternoon Sean where you are um I um when I looked at the photographs I mean they're hauntingly beautiful the color palette they're warm and and ghostly and um I'm sat the saturation pulls me in I love that um I went to your website or what what Jeff sent and I read you know so when you have the words and the history of these buildings together with the images um, they're way more richer. I mean, then then I feel the history of of the spot. I feel there's a few of them where the buildings are abs are gone now, um, or one of them where the building doesn't stand anymore. Um, all that makes it much more rich. Um, but like Jamie, I'm I'm really curious where you want to take this work because um, for the wider audience viewing this again today we're saturated by this by work so how do we make it different how do we make it stand out what makes this project um you know riveting for the for the masses um that's the question so really where is it that you think like jamie asked where do you think you want to go with this and then we can help you better so let me um just before sean I, um the atelier project uh, that uh, Sean participated in at the Griffin Museum in Boston is a really interesting program that they have where they bring people in to um, go through a process to get, and at the end, there's a show. And every person comes with to a final project, and you go through and you, um, you learn more about the process of um, developing an artist statement and a project statement and trying to kind of come together. And so, so it's... Um, so I, I know what he's gone through with that because I took an atelier a few years back at the Griffin as well. Um, and and I, I see where he's come. But so that so given that that's the case, Sean, um, and, and both of them have, both uh, Jamie and Ellen have the question, like, where do you go with this? Because now the atelier is done. And now this lives out in a bigger world where it needs to become something else. What is, your, what is it you're looking to do with that? Well, uh, being a fine art photographer, I, I want to show it. And... I uh, recently had a portfolio review with Frances Jakubek of the Griffin, and she's um, most recently worked at the Bruce Silverstein Gallery in New York. And she was saying, well, for this project, you needed 10 images. And she would she said that she would like to see 20 images of this with varying subject matter. So that helped me because Finding houses that are abandoned is a little trickier. I'm finding more commercial spaces that have been abandoned. Like out in Natick on Route 9, there's an old Wendy's that shut down that I'd like to go photograph. There's a bunch of businesses in Winchester, um, an old gas station, some retail shops that I'd like to photograph. The only thing is they don't have the overgrowth that a lot of these images do. And I was wondering is that going to be an issue and just kind of like tying the whole project together? The only way you know is by doing it. Mm -hmm. You got to just shoot it and you just got to make those photographs. There's no other way to do it. Um, you know, and it may be a juxtaposition of, you know, one type of abandonment and hauntingly um, historic building environments and then the juxtaposition of another type of decaying. And that may actually add to your story versus detract because there's a comparison going on. Mm -hmm. um, you only know by pushing pushing through the boundaries and then then paring it down. Um, I was wondering like what Jamie was saying, adding more of a human element, um, 
how could I actually do that? Well, go, so I, I, th I thought about that when he was talking about that too. So one of the, one of the things that I like about this um, is that there, there's, you, you hear a lot about, um, what's that phrase, decay porn? Or something like that, where people just take pictures of of, of places that are just torn down, and they're, and they're interesting. But what you have are places that have life. Like there's a rose bush here that's all almost look like it's tended. You know, there's so there's there's a place that's de, you know abandoned somewhat, but it's not completely abandoned. And this place, you know, is there's there's some life to it as well. And like there's somebody has a flag up here. You know, so the, the place might be abandoned. There's that, there's that element of that someone is tending to it. There's, there's a certain life that, that, you know, somebody has put that there. Somebody's cared about it. Um, you know, and as I, as I look through it, the same thing on the, I mean, maybe that's graffiti there, but, you know, perhaps somebody created a piece of art on the, uh, on the chimney here. Um, so I guess that's when, when, when Jamie said that, that's, that's what I thought of, that there are these elements of current life in the spaces that are, abandoned to some extent yeah well I, th I think what um what what i what i mean is is as the audience you you can you can put yourself into the shop but also that the the original context for for what these things were made for has changed so they're they're overgrown with nature or they are or they've been graffitied or or they're just there's just that just general sort of entropy and they're just sort of decaying and I think what um I think there's I think you you need to probably either work out if you want to make these look a certain way or whether you want to let the subject dictate um how you present these so when you're saying like you don't know if um uh you know these places are going to be right because they're not as overgrown or but i think um you know what like ellen said just just go and shoot them i think the the thing is there'll probably be some kind of element that you will find that there is where well, there is a commonality between all these images and maybe maybe there's maybe there's uh there th there are things that are, are wildly different between them but also things that are the same and um so i mean it's it's an interesting uh i think that these these images can that they have the potential i think to be very to, to hit us on a very sort of emotional kind of level like uh i think the the because because you've shot these at night, um, as as Ellen said, they have this sort of ghostly quality to them, and this slightly kind of unreal uh, sort of uh, effects with I think from the long exposure and the the, the saturation of the color. Um, so in in that sense, you're kind of manufacturing a, a look, which which isn't a bad thing. It's just that's that's your, that's your kind of like artistic way of of, of doing it. Um, but I think they that there could be that commonality between them in that they 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 kind of give you a feeling mm. from that. Like there's this slightly kind of uh, unreal sort of because obviously with long exposure, um, these things the, the these are much brighter than we would see them in in the dark. So we're kind of seeing in a way we don't see as 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 humans. Um, and it's, I think that, that in itself could, could little things like that can, can kind of draw these together as a set, even though the subjects might, might vary, even though that, but they still have a common kind of theme of like this abandoned kind of spaces. Does, does that make sense? Absolutely. Um, I mean, we're, we're in a throwaway society, uh, all these properties have been shunned either by their owners. Uh, some of them are still owned privately, but just not lived in. Um, and even business, just businesses today, you know, with, you know, everything with COVID going on and things going under, um, I think all that can tie together. Yep. 
Ellen? A social commentary. Mm -hmm. And especially with, with new buildings that don't have the overgrowth and perhaps, I mean, what kind of came to mind as, as Jamie was talking is that in the new work, you could maybe play with multiple, you know, you take lots of different photographs of a particular, let's say Wendy's, mm -hmm. you go there and you shoot little, lots of little um, small areas of it and you build more of a collage and you rephotograph it. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of put that against these, these standalone photographs. So then you have a real interesting juxtaposition because the buildings that you're discovering now don't have all the overgrowth, but they're still abandoned. They're still, there's so multiple layers of history. And so by creating like this collage of multiple photographs building on, you kind of make, it's an interesting juxtaposition for the viewer to be sucked in. And that's the goal here is how to create work that's gonna suck in an audience that wouldn't necessarily stop. So okay. I, have a, I have a thought, cause you've talked a little bit about um, like trying to find some of these homes. Um, mm -hmm. And as a, as a person who just spent two years trying to find a place <laughs> to, to live, um, you can, you can like go on to like a Zillow or a Redfin and find like properties that are in foreclosure. You know, that's a good way to like find properties that you think might be decrepit, you know, or, you know, the places that are being sold essentially as a lot. Um, and that might be a good place to, to find the, um, the material to be able to shoot. Um, another thing I found is I've gone on Facebook and various town uh, groups like Newton Waltham and just ask people, you know, hey, I'm doing this project. Does anyone know of any abandoned, you know, houses or buildings? And I've gotten a, a pretty good reaction from that. I bet. Yeah, I bet you as you go into a little further out in the suburbs, because Newton and Waltham, they're, um, or at least Newton is a bit tony, um, but you go a little bit west and uh, they're buildings are further and farther apart, but you'll probably have more luck climbing places that maybe are not uh, as, as well kept. And I love the history when uh, yes. uh, that you put with the buildings, with the photographs, I, the history just added such an incredibly rich dimension to the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I that's not some, oh, sorry. That's not something we've, we've been able to show here. We've just been looking at the images, but Sean does have, you know, a good long story about what the circumstances of each of these buildings are. And I think that's an important thing to make sure to understand. We will have a link to Sean's uh, body of work and his website. Um, so you can take a look at that and all the additional work he's done. So I'm, I'm sorry, Sean, I interrupted you there. No, it's okay. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, uh, so let's, let's leave it, uh, Ellen, um, we're going to uh, get toward wrapping it up here. Do you have any last thoughts, anything we haven't talked about or anything you want to reiterate for Sean? Well, absolutely beautiful work. I know it's been critically acclaimed. Um, and you, I mean, for an atelier subject matter, you, you nailed it. Um, again, because we live in a world with it's inundated by photographers and images and photographs. I think that playing and making, you know, your new work kind of pushing the envelope and then playing that against these still images um, just adds to the body of work and, you know, perhaps gets, gets you into the fine art gallery sooner. Mm -hmm. um, Jamie Windsor, our special guest, do you have uh, any, <laughs> any thoughts for Mr. Sullivan? Um, I, I, I think there's a, po a possible way you, you could expand this project. And I don't know if this is, this would be right or not, but there seems to be, there's, there's two kind of things that stick out for me here, which one is, one is the, the detail and the texture and the decay and all that. And then there's the wider context of how these buildings exist within their, within their environment. Um, and I'm wondering if there's two kind of separate styles of, or two separate kind of, um, you know, one we, we've got, like, you've got a few closer up ones, like, like you got one, one of the door where you see a bit more kind of detail there and then somewhere you're sort of stood back a bit and then you see the whole kind of whole, the whole building. And, um, I'm wondering if these can be kind of almost ordered a bit more in terms of like like a and this sort of an establishing kind of sort of a shot of each of each place but 
that's not necessarily the right way to go but i think i think it's something that that i i because i don't think you can do that in one photo i don't think you can you can get the the atmosphere and the and the how, how they kind of so how, how they exist um in the wider context with all the overgrown stuff and everything but then also see all the detail because i think that that would make an image too too busy and it would you wouldn't kind of know it, it would it would lose something um but i think it's a fantastic kind of subject it's something that i i just kind of want to see more of it really i think that's yeah. I think I think that's the thing. I think just shoot as many as many of these as you can, and then just kind of pick the the best ones and make a make a kind of a you know a really sort of strong kind of body of body of work. I think that's well, it's it, Sean. That's I think doable. you've heard that you've heard that from a, a couple of reviewers, right? So um, actually, I had a question for you because you so like we talked about before, you've shown this work in portfolio reviews and you've gotten feedback on it. Um, what is it, it which, which I, I'm, I'm, I, I credit you for really going out and saying, okay, I want to do something with this program. I need to get input and thoughts from a variety of different people. And, and, uh, and Jamie and Ellen, they have their expertise and their opinions, um, which, which may or may not resonate with you. Um, but and and you you need to talk you you've been talking to a lot of other people so what is it what is it that you're thinking for your next step um, whether it whether it's uh, related to what what Jamie and Ellen have said or what you've heard from other reviewers um, in other circumstances well one reviewer at the New England Portfolio View uh, Greg Crana who owns the Bridge Gallery in Cambridge he said something similar that Jamie just expanded on he would like to see an established shot of kind of like the houses or the buildings around each photo. Um, Jessica Burko of the PRC said it might be interesting to go back and some of the houses that have been torn down, take a photograph of what's built there now. Um, that makes it a long-term Francis... project. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, Francis said that she also enjoyed the history and she thinks that um, any exhibitions I have in the future, it would be interesting to take a historical photo and put it next to it to show mm. what these places looked like when they were pristine. Mm. That would be interesting. I would, I would say in a book, if you put this work together in a book, that just a little icon, if you could find this land map, you know, the land that they're all on and that the real when they were alive and flourishing, juxtaposed juxtaposed with this your work that would be really fully you know engaging the environment and people would really enjoy that okay. well um sean thank you thank you for this i'm i'm looking forward to seeing what happens with the next step because i think you've got um you're, you're taking you're taking this uh in a really smart way getting input thinking about it and looking for the next step for where you move and that's that's what critique and review and feedback is so important for and that's what we're, we're trying to do to get people to think about that and, and showing their work and it's it's hard to get feedback it's sometimes you know you're showing your your baby to people and they're telling you you should go in a different direction sometimes and um so thanks thanks for coming on the crit house sean i appreciate that ellen freelander um always great to have you on the crit house and we are so honored jamie windsor to have you join us here um, from your YouTube channel. I'm going to have a link to a couple of Jamie's videos here, which I promise you go take a look at them that you will, you will learn something in everything that he, uh, every video that he has. So uh, Jamie Windsor, thank you for participating, for, for participating. Oh, thank you. Thank on you the for having me. And for everyone thank else, you thank you for viewing the crit house as well.